previously on Let's Plot. So like every DIY project I've ever made, the day starts in Bunnings. And I came home with a bunch of building materials. This includes timber and some concrete. So if you recall the design that I made in Minecraft in the previous episode, what I basically wanted to do was to have a couple of arches on both sides and connecting those two would be a bunch of beams. This would be the figures in case you wanted to do something similar. This one isn't providing shade yet. It's still wide open. It has no cover on top of it. So in the next episode, we're finally going to finish the shade aspect of this project. And by then, we're going to apply all of the finishing touches. That would make the project complete. Before we begin, a quick update on our weather and climate situation. It's been a month since I worked on my pergola and I've already applied some finishing touches. The shades are there, they are attached via hooks. The cloth itself has eyelets which allows me to easily hook them on or off like so. We're approaching the end of January. February is the final month of summer here in Australia. But the heat waves would be going on until mid-March if last year is an indication. Thanks to all of the UV filtering provided by my shade cloth, my plants are doing really well. Lots of growth, especially on my area. The gibifloras over at the Philippines are pushing out flower stalks. I've already harvested some of them in the past few weeks for propagation. I've left some of them here because I want them to reach full height before I start snipping. My goal is to get rid of all of the flowers. The main reason behind that is to discourage insects from gathering around my plants. Thanks to previous experiments with flower stalk propagation, I have chosen to keep the thicker stems and discard the thinner ones. It has only been a few days since I harvested these flower stalks. I have them individually potted and labeled. And I think it's a good time to go back and look at the emerging ones because these things, they grow quite fast. So let's go have a look around and see if there's anything else we could use.
so hot outside I think I'm going to film the rest of this video in the shade and now we're back we have all of the flowers sorted into individual pots and they have been properly labeled so as you could see each one has their labels the name some pots have multiple flower stalks in it because they are the same type and for now this is just a sorting system I'll be leaving them here to dry to callus over for maybe a week this step is particularly important because they have thick stems and thicker stems tend to take a lot more time to dry out. And I believe the labeling is important because right now it is summer, the leaves and the plants themselves are turning green which makes it a lot confusing because they look a lot the same. Consider this a way for me to preserve my sanity. <laughs> Actually, there's something else I wanted to show you. Come along. I have this pot containing flower stalks which I took off from my Echeveria chocolate. I think I I chopped them off about two weeks ago and in just a week new pops started to emerge. So here's a closer look. So as mentioned these things just popped up after a week and that's the growing season for you. This is exactly the reason why I brave the hot summer sun just to chop off those flower stalks. I'm also sure you've seen this in previous episodes. These are Pops growing off the flower stalks of my Paul Bunyan and as you can see they have really taken off. They are bright green which means that they are actively growing and uh, it's a bit concerning that the rot is starting to go down which means that I might have to move them out and this makes sense because if you look closely so if you look closely at this stalk the rot is traveling down and it's reaching all the way here. This is precisely why this particular pop is pushing out roots because it can no longer pull out nutrients from this stalk. The rest of the plants are still doing fine because it's still quite green underneath so I won't have to move them out. Just this one. Now everything you've seen up until now was just a long setup for the main point of the video and that main point is that I believe that there are several reasons why it is a good idea to remove flower stalks and place them in pots. So let's go through them one by one. We've already gone through the first reason and that is the opportunity for propagation. You've already seen my propagations, they are growing really well. Just make sure to do it during the growing season if you want fast gains. Otherwise, if you do it in the colder months, it would take you about half a year to about a year just to see anything growing. The second reason why I think it's a good idea to separate the flower stalks is because it allows you to bomb your plants with pesticides and fungicides. Whenever there's a bad mealy infestation going on in the garden, I dive straight for systemic pesticides. Now systemic pesticides gets bad reputation for killing bees and stuff. Now remember that these things are tools and if you don't use your tools properly, then you're going to do some damage. To make sure you are not going to affect any pollinators, make sure that you have removed all of the flower stalks prior to applying the pesticide. And you have to remember to keep removing any flower stalks that come out before they bloom, maybe for the next three or so months or at least check the label to see how long the effectivity is. And that leads us to the third reason, and that is by removing all of the flower stalks and placing them elsewhere, you are creating a safe spot for bees and other pollinators to pollinate the plants. I think it would be nice seeing a little patch or a little area where you just have flowers and there's a lot of bee activity going on. Hashtag save the bees. The fourth reason why you'd want to separate the flower stalks is an alternative to the third reason and that is if you want to do some manual pollination or hand pollination. By removing the flower stalks and placing them in a controlled environment, that means that you can ensure that you are the only one doing the pollination and this prevents any unnecessary cross-pollination. The fifth reason is the growth rate. By removing all of the flowers, it means that the plant will now focus all of its growth into growing the main plant itself. Nothing is going into seed production. Seed production is a very costly process for the plant and at times I think it even stunts them in terms of growth, which is why if I want the plants to grow a lot faster, I remove the flower stalks before they start blooming. As you could see, a lot of these flower stalks haven't even opened yet. The sixth reason that comes to mind is a bit superficial. As you know, flower stalks tend to push out between other leaves and if left alone, they could deform the plant, creating some unsightly gaps, making the plant look less regular. So if you are working on a show plant or preparing a plant for a show, you would not want them to have any weird gaps anywhere. Those are only six reasons that I can think of off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are many other benefits to this. If you can think of more, please do write them down in the comments. For more tips, tricks, and techniques, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Seriscapades. Leave a like if you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.